Jeff? Hey. Hello. Jeff? Uh, Can you hear me? Sorry. Oh. Hello. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, hi. Sorry, Melina. Could is this thing on? Couldn't hear you. Sounds like you got a pretty powerful vacuum cleaner there, by the way. Is yours a Bosch? Uh, actually, no, it's not. Uh, but in my defense, it's uh, it's a hand-me-down from my parents. The thing's like older than I am. <laughs> what do you want? This episode will take us to a pretty much dust-free environment. It is possible. Are you ready? Ready when you are. Start your engine. From know-how to wow. The Bosch Global Podcast. I have to say, after every cleaning, I'm still amazed and surprised and shocked how much dust accumulates. Hey, pop quiz. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know where most dust comes from? My bookshelf. <laughs> no, <laughs> no clue. <laughs> uh, actually, it comes from the desert, the Sahara to be specific. Oh. That place produces millions, I don't mean literally millions of tons of dust per year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we even get Sahara dust storms here in Germany. Mm -hmm. and, and all over the world, actually. I mean, you can find Sahara dust in Japan and even the Amazon. Hi, everyone. My name is Milena Otwolf. And I'm Jeff Gostaitis. Welcome to our show. Or, let's name it, welcome to our very special Bosch Wafer Fab Dresden special. And again, we're not talking about some cleaning maniac's apartment, but a factory of all places. You have to do a lot over weeks, cleaning up every time, every day, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. That sounded like a rap. Cleaning up. Cleaning, cleaning up, cleaning up every time, every day, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. <laughs> also, it's not just super clean, but it's also one of the most high-tech places that you could imagine. Yes, that's Bosch's new wafer fab in Dresden in Germany. For this fab to work efficiently, it has to be absolutely dust-free. Even the tiniest speck of dust on a silicon wafer is a huge problem. Dust-free. How are they achieving that? I mean, for me, it's already difficult enough to keep my apartment presentable. Yeah, yeah, I love a, I love a clean and tidy apartment too. You know, there are a few things in my apartment that I especially hate to dust. Indeed. Bathroom shelves or storage, for example. How can it even be that these appear to be always dusty minutes after I clean them? <laughs> because this dust situation got me thinking, what would be something even worse to dust off? Dust the dinosaurs. <laughs> dust the dinosaurs, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we have approximately 30 dinosaurs and 13 mammals in our gallery. This is Will Black. He is uh, Exhibit Services Supervisor at the Natural History Museum of Utah in the United States. So we have 41 skeletons that we keep dusted, and annually we like to get into our gallery and dust the dinosaurs. And yes, they do some special kind of spring cleaning, <laughs> as he just started to explain. Cleaning our skeletons is a very enjoyable task. It's quite rewarding. It's great <laughs> to watch all the dust come off and watch the color come back to life. I find it to be very rewarding. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that actually might be a type of cleaning that I could actually enjoy too. Mm -hmm. Getting getting really close. <laughs> I mean, for one thing, you're, you're getting close to these, these ancient bones. But how do they actually do that? Are they are they wiping it down with a cloth or something? <laughs> I love that picture. <laughs> Imagine <Right>? that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think wiping is part of it, though. <laughs> but uh, they use a bunch of different tools. Feather dusters and paint brushes for the more delicate parts. They use an air compressor to blow the dust out of any small cracks and corners. That's what they use for most of the dusting. And then they use some brute force as well. And we have some really tall skeletons. We have a barosaurus that's 90 feet long, and its head's up about 30 feet high. Wow. And it's over our platform where it's hard to get ladders. So we'll use our scissor lift and get up high. Did I mention I'm afraid of heights? And we actually have a leaf blower <laughs> that we dust the skeleton off with. <laughs> we love that we're on a high-tech podcast and we're talking about using leaf blowers for dinosaur skeletons. It's perfect. <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. But I mean, isn't that, honestly, if you're using a leaf blower inside, isn't that just making a bigger mess? It does. Okay. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it does. It's also 
nerve wracking. You have to worry about damaging some very expensive objects. Yeah, I guess so. We have a very small Archaeopteryx and that one is actually suspended on the cable. So we get up on our catwalk and we carefully raise that one up on the cable and lightly dust it with a brush, being very careful of all the delicate ribs. And then we carefully mm-hmm. lower it back down. Seems like uh, it's not just us that's, uh, or you, Melina, because you really kind of went off the rails on the, the dust topic earlier, but it seems like it's a problem, problem <laughs> for Will too. Fair enough. <laughs> Did you know that dinosaurs are still roaming the earth? (laughs) Uh, Are you talking about birds? Quizzing right back at you? Yeah. (laughs) Pop quiz. (laughs) Uh, Are you talking about de-evolved dinosaurs? Is that your idea? No, I mean those big old dinosaurs. They are still going places. Carefully boxed up. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, I see. (laughs) We just hosted Antarctic Dinosaurs from the Field Museum, and it closed a month ago. And we, we do our best to dust all the components as we pack them up. Antarctic Dinosaurs is heading to Atlanta, where they're going to show it next. Well, Melina, Mm -hmm. I know where we're going next. Atlanta? (laughs) Duh. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to Dresden, and Mm -hmm. apparently... Mm, Makes sense. (laughs) uh, It seems like our sound designer seems to think we're riding our vacuum cleaners there. (laughs) Yeah. Why not? A perfectly normal thing to do when you've spent months at home because of lockdown. <laughs> it's kind of just a high-tech broom when you think about it. Riding your vacuum. <laughs> so here in Dresden, at the brand new Bosch Wafer Fab, they are very particular about dust. Get it? Da-da. Particular. Da-da. 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 Can the sound designer give me some drums, a little riff the there? Drum roll. Ba-dum. <laughs> well, that was your moment to shine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well played, Jeff. Yes, yes. Thank you, Milena. Thank you. To be fair, <laughs> you couldn't build a museum that is as dust-free as this factory is. Because, and just for starters, we have to put on protective gear. A full suit, in fact. A head covering as well, a hood. Mm-hmm. And we have to put on these special shoes and wear gloves as well. Almost as if we're surgeons in an operating room. Mm-hmm. But even a level or two above that standard. That's right. So for our listeners, you can have a look in the show notes, and there you will find a link to a video where our friend Nicole Scott takes a tour of the new Dresden Wafer Fab, and you can see firsthand what this environment is like. So just like we're doing right now, let's have a look at the video. I'm here in Silicon Saxony, which is one of the three largest semiconductor clusters in the world. This here is in Dresden, and I get to find out exactly how a semiconductor is made in a clean room. That's already cool. Oh, wow, she's got the AR glasses. That's great. Oh, I hope they have to go through that air shower. (laughs) Oh, there it is. I saw that a couple of days ago. So I'm pretty excited to get to the clean room because I got to visit your facility in Reutlingen. Yes. Okay, so she's getting suited up now in her little space suit or mm-hmm. surgical suit on steroids. So now that I'm all uh, suited up, yeah. uh, where to next? So before we reach the clean room, we have to pass the air shower the because air shower. we have to remove all the remaining particles of the suit because we have to get rid of all the particles to avoid that they get on our wafers and spoil our wafers. So this whole get-up wasn't enough? That wasn't enough, <laughs> no. I wish I had that in front of my apartment. Okay, so we know Nicole dances in the shower. Okay, good. Oh, the clean room. Oh, this wow. This is it. This is the clean room. Exactly. We're in now. Yeah. And it's very yellow. Yeah, it's yellow. It is so yellow, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 interesting that the that yellow color gives it a very retro 70s yeah. kind of feel to it. Let me sum that up. A pretty big production hall. A pretty big, yes. <laughs> uh, for reference, that's about the size of one and a half soccer fields. And it's probably one of the cleanest places on Earth. So it's a big clean room. Also, it's one of the yellowest places on Earth. Everything is yellow there because the lights themselves are yellow. That's another measure, just like the dust-free environment, to protect the delicate things that are made there. And there's one other thing that you'll notice as you enter the clean room. And on the top of this clean room, there is installed the um, transport system for automatically load and unload the machines. 
and the lines of the transport systems are roughly 2.5 kilometers. This is Otto Graf, by the way. He's the boss at Bosch's wafer fab in Dresden, the project manager. And he has led the construction of this billion euro facility, which will officially open just a few days from this episode coming out. Yeah, everyone at Bosch is pretty excited about this. Yes. Quite the big deal. Brooke from Melbourne, Australia. As we say, good on ya. I'm Kate from London, UK. To all my colleagues in Dresden, wishing you a super day making wafers for the tech of the future. Hi, this is Patrick from Stuttgart. I'm really looking forward to visit you guys. Hi, this is Jessica Dahl from the US. I'm wishing you all the very best, Dresden team. I'm Johanna from Stuttgart, Germany. I wish you nice weather for the opening. Hi to Dresden, here is Charlotte from Schillerhöhe. I wish you a great start, let's go! Also, our German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, will be participating in the opening. Angie. <laughs> yes, she'll be there. It's a big of a deal <laughs> in Germany. Yeah, sure. But I think it's time to talk about the why. I mean, what's all this effort made for? Mm -hmm. Why have all this clean room technology and a fancy transport system running under the ceiling? Right. What we produce here is semiconductors. So basically, that's turning wafers into chips. A wafer is a thin disk of silicon crystal 30 centimeters in diameter. That's right. And on each wafer, about 2,000 or even up to 10,000 chips are created. So like the MEM sensors we heard about in one of our previous episodes, these things are tiny. And they're very, very delicate hence all the protective measures. And in fact, there's yet another level of protection for the wafers, these silicon disks. Where the semiconductor wafers are stored and transported, and this is a special clean room in the clean room, and that's clean room class number one. That's only one particle in a square feet room allowed one particle with 0.2 microns. So it's really, really very, very clean. Okay, wow. A super clean room in the clean room. Wow. Wow, indeed. Everything is so clean that even during the construction, they had to constantly clean everything to not have any dust actually settling anywhere. Oh, wow. Now, during production, the trick is the wafers are only leaving the super clean room inside these transport boxes that are running along the ceiling. Mm -hmm. But Autograph can describe it much better. Otto, would you please? Then they have an interface. If they're moving the wafers to the machinery, there's a special interface so that the wafers can never get particles from the outer clean room. So then it's clear the wafers are Every step, every time, very, very protected to get no contamination from the outside. They're individually sealed from the outside world every step along the way. And it's not all about dust and light. They're also susceptible to vibrations. So even more protection is necessary. Any technology that doesn't need to be on the factory floor has been moved one level below to the subfloor. Never ever can vibration from a bump or whatever go to the wafer table or to the machinery so that the machinery is very stable, very clear, very, very solid installed. Oh, these wafers are some divas, huh? Don't touch me! Don't look at me! <laughs> Don't shake me! Ew! Dust! <clears throat> Dust! <clears throat> <laughs> If I'd be a wafer, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's what I would sound like. <laughs> I, I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. You're absolutely right. And, and I mean, even even more, even even farther, it's they're they're susceptible to temperature and humidity as well. Those things need to be kept in in specified ranges. So you know, there, there's an enormous amount of effort that goes into this. Apparently, yeah. And. Yeah, of course. And like you said, divas. So that means it's quite expensive as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's expensive to maintain these perfect conditions um, that ultimately lead to semiconductor production. Well, but I guess if perfect conditions mean perfect results in the end, then it should be worth the effort. Mm -hmm. The first silicon what we 
had produced in our fab had a very, very excellent yield, much more than 90%. So, and that is really good for the first silicon out of the fab, new clean room, new infrastructure, new equipment, <coughs> a new team. So that is really a very, very excellent result. What do Germans say when they want to acknowledge a big achievement like this? They don't say very, very excellent result. <laughs> No, uh, not bad. <laughs> uh, well, but yeah, no, <laughs> it is very excellent. He's right, <laughs> especially for a test run. I mean, when we enter a serious production, the yield will be even better. So very excellent. Absolutely. That's the, the classic German enthusiasm <laughs> for you. Not bad at all. <laughs> In all seriousness, quality really is of the essence here. I mean, they're producing chips for cars, so for airbags, for control systems, and so on. This stuff has to work. Yes, absolutely. So for automotive, it's a must to have the highest quality. Zero defect. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, zero defect, which is a strong statement. Uh, and it, as we learned in our last episode about microphones, remember teaching cars how to hear? Mm -hmm. in, in a car, the chips are I exposed was there. to very, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> chips are exposed to really strong vibrations, extreme temperatures, which can rain either far below zero to even above 100 degrees Celsius. This requires higher standards for the toughness and durability of these special components. Developing semiconductors that can actually withstand these stressors and for the vehicle's entire lifetime is an intensive process. One of the things they do to achieve the zero defects goal is to add yet another component to the mix. You can only do that if you have a full controlled digital fab. Digitalization. This factory is fully automated. And I'm quite happy to be a part of this. Because it's amazing what we can do, what we achieved, and what we want to achieve with uh, software. This is Enrico Neuber. He's one of the software and data geniuses who make it all happen. He will tell us more about that digital part of the fab. It'll be fun and full of lots of facts. So let's make a quick break here. We'll hear all about things big data in the second part of our Dresden special. We'll talk about the software that runs this fab. Okay, then I only have one last question about the hardware, Jeff. Does the clean room ever need to be cleaned? Do you mean, do they have to do spring cleaning also in the clean room? Yeah. <laughs> You'd <laughs> yeah. be surprised. With a leaf blower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the clean room is every time cleaning. The airflow is cleaning up himself. So there is filters on the top. There is a cycling of the airflow. Oh. And of course, there are also people in for cleaning up the floor space. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I didn't see that coming. I think they overlooked some big potential for automation there. Oh, think again. We are working now on that, that we will do that with robot systems. Ah. Of course. Of course. That would have been the first thing I had automated. But as usual, nobody asked me. Well, we'll bring you on for the next build, Milena. Don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> um, but, I mean, would you have a robot doing, doing your spring cleaning at home? Mm, absolutely. That's my <laughs> dream. Having a robot to clean the apartment basically 24-7... I'm always in a bit of a bad mood when I know that I have to clean. So I could spare oh. others and myself that. <laughs> and, and guess for me, a cleaning robot would also come closest to having a pet. Kind of nice. Oh. I didn't know robots came in fluffy <laughs> textures now. Oh, I'd love that. But I think it'll be a while until robots can dust off uh, dinosaur skeletons. <laughs> that would be the next step then. Can't wait. From know-how to wow. Okay, Jeff, see you here in just a few days. Cause That's right. In fact, the second part of this episode um, will be released only a week from now on, on the 3rd of June. Can't wait. So stay tuned. Bye. Bye, everyone. The Bosch, Bosch Global Global Podcast. 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 Cleaning up. C -c 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 -c
cleaning, cleaning up, cleaning up every time, every day, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. Don't touch me. Cleaning up. Don't look at me. Cleaning up. Don't shake me. Ew. How much dust accumulates. Don't touch me. Cleaning up. Don't look at me. Cleaning up. Don't shake me. Absolutely dust free. Cleaning up. Cleaning, cleaning up. Room class number one. Absolutely. Cleaning up. 